Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Professor Javed Iqbal Kroker, Professor and HOD of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology Department, CMH Lahore Medical College. So, I am starting with the first topic of forensic medicine. And this my first lecture will be on the firearm injuries. So we'll discuss firearm and its mechanics. <clears throat> there was a study which was carried out in Department of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology in Ken Gabor Medical University in 2003 to 2005. And it was seen that the out of uh, 2,578 cases, the predominant cause of death was the firearms. 736 cases was were about the firearm deaths. Then a similar study was carried out in 1997 to 2003 in the Department of Forensic Medicine in Peslabad. And they also concluded that the firearm deaths were predominant and more than 45% of the death, deaths were caused by firearms. And you can see also that from childhood, there is a fashion of toys of firearms nature. So the siblings and the young lot and the children, they are acquainted with the use of these firearms. So this is a this is fashion should not be promoted. So we'll try to understand what firearms are, what are its mechanics and why it is necessary for us being a forensic medicine student. When we see a firearm in simple word, we can say a weapon or an arm which fires, but basically this is an instrument or device which propels a projectile by means of expensive forces of the gases generated by the combustion of some explosive substance. So there is a mechanism which when is initiated, explodes the substance and tremendous amount of pressure is generated which propels the projectile forward to throw ahead. So that is a firearm. So a brief history about the firearms, it is that initially they were bows, arrows, bows and arrows. And you know the arrows are thrown with the bows and this is also an instrument of throwing a projectile. Then crossbows came, then simple catapult and huge ballista. That is Minjnik which was used in Muhammad bin Qasim in olden time. And they used to throw the stones with the help of this huge ballista. So this is a brief history that how the projectiles were initiated. So it is said that in ancient time, the uh, firearms were imported to Europe from China. And all the efforts were made to make the weapon more efficient, accurate, and produce substantial damage. <clears throat> so various types of weapon they were devised. Initially, they were cannons, the earliest guns which were front loading. Front loading means the bullet or the projectile was introduced from the muzzle end. And then came the breech loading. Breech loading is 
in the middle part, there is a firing mechanism. So the earliest were the cannons, which were front loading, then came the breech loading. The uh, parts were the same for the front loading and for the breech loading that there was a lock, stock and the barrel. Then came with assault rifles. So with advancement and more sophistication, the most common AK-47 known as Kalashenkov, which was invented by a Russian scientist, Michael Kalashenkov, and he invented an automatic assault rifle, AK-47. This is another view of the AK-47. And when we talk about the firearms, generally we can categorize it into handguns, rifles, shotguns, submachine guns, and the machine guns. And the handgun can be further subdivided into single shot, derringers, revolvers, and automatic pistols. This is a derringer or the single shot pistol. This is a revolver. In the revolver, the chamber revolves in the uh, firing section, which is the active part, active, active section of the weapon where the firing pin strikes. So the chamber revolves and bullet one after the other comes in front. And this is the piston automatic. There is a magazine which is pushed from below in the handle and the bullet is pushed into the chamber with the help of this spring one after the other. So the other classification which is uh, very important for us regarding the uh, wound production and other mechanics, that is the rifling. So rifling is a specific or special mechanism which distincts the weapons into basic two types. That rifle firearms, rifle firearms those in which the barrel has been grooved engraved into parallel running lines, parallel to each other, spirally arranged. And they can be having long muzzle, long uh, muzzles like rifles and the military rifles, or the short barrel like the low velocity revolvers and the pistols. So these are rifled weapons in which the barrel has been engraved into spiral groups which run parallel to each other from chamber to the muzzle end spirally arranged and then the other is the smooth board in which the barrel has not been rifled and they are smooth from chamber to muzzle end and they discharge the pellets so the rifle firearm fire the bullets, whereas the smooth board weapons fire the pellets. <clears throat> so on this basis, the barrel of the rifle has two ends, the breech end and the muzzle end. The breech end is the place where the firing mechanism is placed and the muzzle end is the where, the where the bullet exits. And bore is the internal diameter of the barrel. Weapon may be smooth bore or rifled, but bore is the internal diameter. So this is how the spirally arranged grooves appear in the rifled weapon. Whereas a smooth board weapon may be choked or non-choked. The barrel is smooth, but the muzzle end may be reduced in the caliber. That is called choking. We'll discuss in 
coming up slides with what choking means. Whereas the rifled weapon can be classified into short barrel and long barrel. And there is a specific mechanism which is called rifling. So in smooth board weapon, the barrel is smooth. It has not been engraved with the grooves, whereas the rifled weapon are specifically rifled for the grooves. So the, whatever the weapon is, the basic function is the same. There is a grip action in the middle, a barrel in both the smooth board and the rifled weapon. <clears throat> this is AK-47. These are other various types of the fire, firearms. So the rifled firearms, why they are called rifled? Because the inside of the bore is rifled. And what is rifling? It means that the inside of the bore is cut longitudinally with a number of spiral grooves which run parallel to each other but are spirally twisted from chamber to the muzzle end. And the raised portion are called lands and the load ones are called grooves. The objective and the function of rifling is that it gives gyroscopic stability, a spin to the bullet. And during the flight, the spin gives stability to the bullet. It increases the accuracy to hit the target. And it prevents the bullet from wobbling, <coughs> prevents it to become unstable. When it travels through the air, the bullet is spinning and it prevents the bullet to wobble. So regarding the bore or the gauge or the caliber of the rifle weapon, we measure the gauge or the caliber is the by measuring the distance from two opposite lanes. So it is the width of the barrel between the two opposite lanes and it is expressed in one hundredth of an inch or in millimeters. This is how when we see from the muzzle end or from the chamber by breech opening, these spiral grooves appear, land and grooves, depressed portions. So the raised portion are called the lands and the depressed portion are called the grooves. So these are various uh, photographs and diagram rec representations showing the lands and grooves. So this is the photograph which is showing an imprint of the lands and grooves. This is very important, very characteristic. Every weapon has its unique walk, like fingerprints of every human being which vary. Similarly, the imprint which is made by lands and grooves vary. So when we get hold of any weapon from a crime scene with a practice fire, we compare the bullet which has been recovered from the scene of crime and with the help of comparison microscope, we can compare the two bullets. And if it has been fired from the same weapon, it will have identical imprint of lanes and grooves on the bullet which has no practically, practically fired. So this is very important characteristic that the lanes and grooves make an imprint on the bullet which helps in identification of the 